Hello and welcome. You probably already know this story. The Simpsons, the average American family, lives in Springfield. Homer, the father, has two passions, watching TV and drinking beer. But his daily life is rarely relaxing. Whether it's his son Bart, who does all the stupid things he can, his daughter Lisa, who is a gifted girl, or his wife Marge, who can't stand to see him get drunk all day long. But what you may not know is that the Simpson family home did exist once, and today you will know what happened to it. This is the sad story of the real Simpsons house. Before we start, if you like this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. First, let's start with the question of the day. What instrument does Lisa Simpson play? Is it A, trumpet, B, clarinet, or C, saxophone? Write the correct answer in the comments, and I'll tell you the answer at the end of the video. It all started in 1997, when a new season of the series was about to begin. At that time, The Simpsons was going through a crisis because most of the recipes obtained were received from the brands that paid to have the characters on their products. Without this money, the series was in danger of being canceled. So the producers of the series called on a team of advisors and asked them to do something extreme to get The Simpsons out of this disaster. After studying this case, the advertisers proposed something extreme, to build The Simpsons' house in real life, but to build it down to the last detail, just like in the series. The producers were so desperate that they accepted the project regardless of its cost. Once the project was approved, the construction team reviewed more than 100 episodes of the series by reviewing the house plans with the Simpson illustrators themselves. This is how construction began in a place in Nevada in the United States. The house began to be built with several details. The door frames, for example, were widened and lengthened to allow the passage of Big Homer and Marge's tall hair. The stairs leading to the second floor were built with more of an incline than normal to give them a cartoon effect and the ground floor was painted in a very special way to better imitate the colors of the series. And even Bart Simpson's cabin was also built in the yard at the back of the house. However, the construction was only the first step because the challenge was to decorate everything exactly as it was in the series. That's when one of Hollywood's best decorators was hired, and that man was a real specialist. He and his team hung curtains decorated with the corn on the cob in the kitchen, built the closet in Bart's room, and placed a row of identical t-shirts and shorts in it. They painted mouse holes on the walls near the floor, placed Lisa's saxophone against her bed, and even painted an oil stain at the entrance as a nod to the lack of maintenance on Homer's car. And finally, after a lot of work and money, the house was ready and perfect. When you entered the house, you really felt like you were in the Simpsons family. It was then that Fox began to promote it and invite people from all over the world to visit. At the first event, it was Matt Groening, the creator of the series, who sprayed some of Bart's graffiti in the garage. After that, he signed his name on the cement in the yard. Thus, at the beginning, during the first few weeks, there were lines of people from several neighborhoods waiting for many hours to enter the house. It was at that time that the problems began, because the house had been built in a brand new residential area whose builders had authorized the construction of the house to also do a little advertising on the place. However, the neighbors who already lived there hated being invaded by visitors and filed several complaints, which forced Fox to pay them a good amount of money. But as the house was completed and presented to the public, the second phase of the plan began. The producers of The Simpsons and Pepsi would offer the house to the lucky person who found the special winning Pepsi drink, and that person would then be able to live there. Of course, it was the dream of thousands of fans of the series, because if you love The Simpsons, you would obviously like to own their home. The competition was a success, and thousands of people participated. Everything was fine, until the winner was announced on September 21st, 1997. The winning number was 9786065. Five. But time passed without anyone claiming the prize. The said winner was sought for a long time without ever being found. It was on the news, in newspapers, magazines, absolutely everywhere in the United States, and even in the rest of the world, but nothing. No one knew where the winner was. Of course, this generated a lot of expense, but it also gave the impression to the people who had participated in the competition that all this was a fraud. 
and that the company wanted to keep the Simpsons house to themselves to transform it into a tourist place and take advantage of it. As things got more complicated, the producers of the series developed a plan B that consisted of randomly selecting another winner. After several months, in December 1997, it was finally announced that the winner was Barbara Howard, a 63-year-old retired woman living in Kentucky. The lady lived in an area so poor that the limousine sent by Fox could not access it by the muddy road that led to her house. She was flown to the Simpsons' house for the first time. Not only her, but also her two daughters and her grandson, for whom the show had paid the expenses. Once at home, the woman posed for a picture with her giant ceremonial key to her new home and told the press that she still couldn't believe her luck. However, a few days later, Fox had to face another problem. The woman did not want the house and demanded that in exchange she be given cash. She said she didn't want to move across the country to live in this house. And she also didn't want to live there because she realized it was a cartoon house. She didn't want the house because it was absolutely useless to her. Fox then tried to convince the lady, but she refused categorically, and the company had no choice but to pay her a good sum of money and take ownership of the house again. She didn't know what to do with the house. It was then that Matt Groening proposed the idea of having it appear live on television. But even if the idea seemed good, it was an impossible thing because the house was in a residential area. In addition, they were beginning to have more and more problems with the neighbors because the Neighborhood Landlords Association did not like having a cartoon house in its midst and did not want the place to turn into a center of attraction either. So Fox was no longer allowed to show it to the public and could no longer take advantage of it, which is why it had no other choice. The first thing they did was paint the outside with more discreet colors because the neighbors hated the yellow color of the house. While Fox was thinking about what to do with the house, it hired a security team to watch the house 24 hours a day so that no one would steal its precious contents. However, many people still managed to get into the house and take away several decorative elements. First, the Simpson family photos that were hanging on the wall disappeared, followed by the snowball bowl. Even though it was being watched, it was gradually looted. They thought that it might be the guards themselves who were behind this, since no one was going there to visit. Finally, after some years, Fox came to the conclusion that the house should be sold. It was only in 2001 that a buyer was found, because strangely enough, no one seemed to want to buy it either. The person who bought it was named Danielle, a secretary, who was not at all interested in the fact that it was the Simpsons house. Thus, the lady moved with her children and her husband, making them the first human family to live in the Simpsons' mythical house. But since she was not a Simpsons fan, they had bought the house to live in. She replaced the carpets, painted the walls, and threw everything related to the Simpsons in the garbage. So that's how the Simpsons house was simply destroyed. However, this makeover didn't deter the real Simpson fans from visiting the site. But the neighbors hate it because so many visitors are a problem. Once, for example, a group of university students arrived completely drunk and knocked on the door of the house, demanding that they be allowed in. Danielle's children were alone and had to convince the boys from the window upstairs to leave. Meanwhile, the neighbors had already called the police. Other times, there were people trying to get in when there was no one there. In addition, several times during the holidays, the windows of the house were flooded with curious people taking pictures or videos with Danielle's family inside. For the latter, it became very annoying and even terrifying. However, over the years, Danielle eventually divorced and remarried. As much as Danielle can no longer stand living there, something inside her prevents her from leaving. Indeed, Danielle feels that this will really be her home forever. She also says that mail for the Simpson family, sometimes quite strange, arrives at her home every day. Once, for example, she received a letter to Homer Simpson from the so-called American Army, which needed him to do his military service. On another occasion, she received several shampoo samples, reportedly from a well-known company, it was for Marge Simpson. Danielle simply laughs about it and says that even if it doesn't seem so, the Simpsons do live at home. Now you know the incredible and sad story of the real Simpsons house. Did this story surprise you? Would you dare to live in the Simpsons' real home? Let us know in the comments. Otherwise, the answer to the question of the day is the saxophone. I hope many of you found it.